Alrighty, so I'm here with something a little different today. Uh, so, one thing I really like about Unreal is some of its shortcuts, its hacks, its cheats, uh, just to making things look nice. Uh, and so today I'm looking at just how these plants move. So, uh, if you don't know, Unreal has uh, a shader-based uh, plant system, or plant wind system, I guess, which makes all these plants sort of sway in the wind and I think that's that's really cool um, obviously you don't get interactivity or anything like that but it gives you like this nice uh, sort of makes everything look more alive because everything's moving rather than just still uh, so today I wanted to have a look at how to do that in Blender so if we have a look at how to do that in Unreal first uh, what we can do is we can go to materials uh, we can find wherever the masters find a plant master tree 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 um plant wind physics here we go all right so here is the plant material uh and the wind physics are down here so uh this this all of this is actually for uh sort of like a fake interaction with the player um all you know but down here this little thing here is the actual wind effect <laughs> That we're seeing in the viewport um, and it uses simple grass wind which just about everything does it's a bit of math in here uh, and that plugs into uh, this world position offset which is sort of like uh, allows the vertices of mesh to be manipulated in world space by the material um, and so uh, anyone who's used blender will know that uh, it actually also has that in its shader so if we pop over to blender i have a basic plant here uh, in the shading view here we go we have this output node here let's delete some of these there we go uh, we have this one right here displacement uh, and this does exactly that this allows us to manipulate the vertices in world space I think world space, or maybe object. This one's in object space. Uh, so that means technically we can make that same shader setup uh, in Blender to get some movement. So I'm going to run you how to do my version of that. Now my version is by far uh, not the best. Uh, yeah, it's not the best. Uh, however, this is a good start, and I'm sure someone will come up with something better. And if you do, please share it so that uh, we can all learn from that and use that. Uh, so one important thing to note, especially if you're doing this with your own plants, is uh, not wet paint, vertex paint. Um, basically this does have uh, some vertex paint on it just to say what should and shouldn't be manipulated by this effect. Um, and so we're going to use that. So we're actually going to start uh, in here. Uh, I'm going to add a simple diffuse shader. Uh, just so we can see what we're doing. Let's make it like a green. There we go, plant. Uh, we also need to, in the material properties down at the bottom here, we need to, uh, oh, this will only work in cycles. Uh, not that, that. All right, so this will, so keep that in mind. I'm sure there's a way to do it with geometry nodes, but I couldn't figure it out in time. So uh, now, yes, so now that we're in cycles, we have this uh, property for surface displacement. We want to change it to displacement only. That means it'll actually move the vertices. Uh, now, traditionally, displacement need, requires a lot of subdivisions, a lot of geometry to move about. Uh, however, this will actually be fine um, because what we're doing uh, sort of moving large chunks we're not trying to add extra detail we're just displacing the entire mesh at once alrighty so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a texture coordinate node uh, text coordinate like so uh, and we're going to plug that straight into a mapping node mapping the generated into mapping like that uh, and we are oops I'm then going to plug that into a noise texture. And this noise texture is going to be the main driver behind uh, what we do. So if we plug the color into surface, just so we can see it. So basically we're gonna be using this as sort of uh, the way we displace all of this. All right, so we're then going to grab ourselves what's called a vector 
displacement like so and basically plug them like that all right so here basically what we're doing is we are just displacing so this is giving us a, a vector value basically it's not intended to be used for that but that's what it's doing for us uh, and then we're displacing that like so so now if I go into cycles what we get is a bunch of hoopla if I up the there we go so it is displacing which is good so now we need to figure out a few things which is how do we animate this and uh, how do we make it look good so what I'm going to do is let's first figure out how we're going to animate this so what we're going to do for that is quite simple uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a value node value uh, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a driver uh, I'm going to delete this little variable thing and for the expression I'm going to go frame multiplied by one and what that'll do is basically give us the current frame number so what we have is a continually increasing number here based on the time and it's increasing in a predictable pattern uh, we're then going to grab a math node and multiply it uh, so I like to keep the rather than add the multiply in the driver I like to keep it separate that way we can have a easier to adjust value here but this basically represents the time uh, or the speed in which our wind goes. So 0 0.02 is a value I'd recommend starting with. Uh, we're then going to add a vector math. Vector math. Here we go. Uh, and I'm going to switch this to multiply and plug this value into the bottom. And the value on the top is the direction it's going in, basically. So if I say one here, it's going to go on just the x value uh, if I put one here it's gonna go just the Y so on and so forth so I can put uh, sort of so we can change the direction the supposed wind is traveling in so I'm gonna put 0 0.2 in this one and 0 0.5 in this one but that is something you can fiddle with as well so now we have a increasing uh, uh, vector kind of um, I'm also going to grab an object info like so and duplicate this math node and add and so what this is going to do is this is going to offset it by the world's location so that all the wind isn't going to look the same on all of them it's going to look different on all of them which is kind of cool so it looks like there's an actual rolling effect of the wind and then we're just going to plug that into location and so what we have is we have a uh, a ever increasing vector on these axes uh, offset by the world location of the object and that is going to basically scroll this 3d texture so now if i up the scale of this a bit uh, and we hit play as you can see it wobbles wibbly wobbly uh, which is we're looking good it's looking good so now we need to basically start uh, uh, what do you call it limiting where this effect is applied on the mesh uh, so uh, scale for scale I recommend two in the noise texture this will add uh, just make it look uh, again something you can fiddle with uh, there's also detail uh, I'm going to turn down roughness a little bit as well but you're welcome oh, didn't need to change distortion welcome to have a fiddle with these settings all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the factor output of the noise texture which is basically a black and white version of the noise uh we're going to use that to drive the scale value on the vector displacement so that it's not displacement not displacing things we don't want it to i'm going to put that there so uh to do that we are going to grab we're going to first use the vertex color so we don't want vertex color there we go so we don't want uh color so we don't want the uh black parts the dark part um, oh I used alpha whoops there we go so we don't want these bouts at the bottom to move so we're going to use that to start with uh, I'm going to just just in case uh, I'm going to use a separate because the there is uh, other colors in here that are used for other things uh, we're then going to grab a math node and we're going to plug red into the top and we're going to multiply it by the factor like so uh, spin those around I don't think it makes a difference though like that and so now all of a sudden we have our we can see the uh, 
noise pattern moving and it's also taken out the uh, base like so so pretty good uh, I'm then so what I like to do is also add a gradient texture over the entire thing just so we get sort of varying movements throughout the thing so uh, varying movements from the center of the leaves to the tip of the leaves so basically we want the tips of the leaves to be moving more than the towards the center so I'm going to switch this to spherical and I'm going to use a mapping node uh, just so we can sort of adjust this sphere uh, let's plug generated into it and let's view it for a second like so uh, and then I want it to be inverted uh, actually let's use a color ramp instead color ramp like that and just flip these Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to try and use the location of this to hopefully put it towards the center. Um, oh gosh, this is tricky. Here we go. All right, there we go. So that's in the center. Maybe drop it a little bit. Alrighty, and then I'm just going to change this to like a darker gray. So it'll still get movement, just not as much. Could probably even like that. Alrighty. Then what we are going to do is simply multiply it again by this value. Uh, so by multiplying these together, the blacks, the darker parts stay dark, while the lighter parts get uh, sort of lighter. Or, or stay light, I guess. It's a bit hard to explain, but math is math. There we go. So now we have moving textures. We've got black down here, so that's not going to move at all. And sort of darker towards the center, so it's not going to move as much. Then what I'm going to do is add one more multiply node, like so. And then plug this into the scale. And basically that last multiply node represents the intensity of the effect. Uh, so my recommended would be 17. Let's see what that looks like. And so we get this like waving effect. Uh, maybe maybe we can drop it to 15. There we go. So that gives you, that's it's not perfect by any means necessary, but it is a good start. And I think, um, I'm sure someone could improve on this, use better noise or something like that. This isn't my strongest suit uh, when it comes to this. However, if you want some, and yeah, we don't have, the base isn't moving at all. So if you want uh, some quick shader-based wind on your plants in Blender, then that is how you do it. Cool.